Pipes are a way to order your code in a more readable format. Let's say you have a small data table with 10 participant IDs, two columns of variable type A, and two columns of variable type B. You want to calculate the mean of the A variables and the mean of the B variables, and return a table with 10 rows, one for each participant, and three columns, the ID, the mean of A, and the mean of B. Now one way you could do this is to create a new object to every step and use that object in the next step. Okay, so first we run this tibble function to create our original data. Then we can gather these data. So let's make a new object called data gathered. Use the gather function to gather the original data. Now we want to create a new column called variable, a new column called value, and we want to gather A1 through B2. So then we can look at data gathered. So this is our data table made long. Now our next step could be to separate the variable column into variable and variable n. So we need to create a new object called data separated. Use the separate function to separate the data from data gathered in the column variable into two no columns. We'll call those var and var n. And we want to separate them at the first character. So now we have separated variables. Here's our new table. Now our next step is to group by the var column. So we want to group A and B for each participant. So let's create a table or new data table called data grouped. These are some functions that we'll be learning next week, the group by function. We can take data separated and then we want to group it by two different variables, id and var. That doesn't look really any different, but the internal structure of the table has these grouped and that's important for our next function, summarize function. So we need to create a new object called data summarized. We want to summarize data in data grouped. And we want to set, make a new column called mean. And it's going to be the mean of the value column within each group. And we want to tell this function, after you're done with this, drop the groups. We don't need the groups anymore. So data summarized. We now, for each participant, have their A, its mean, and their B, its mean. So it's a long data table, but with summarized data. Now we want to get these data back into wide format, so we need to spread them. Data spread, we'll use the spread function to spread the summarized data. And we want to spread data from the var column and use values from the mean column. Okay. So now our spread data are in wide format. One row for each participant, and A and B values in separate columns. And let's say our next step, we also want to rename those columns. So to create our final data set, we can use the rename function, rename values from data spread. We create a new column called A underscore mean, and that will be the values in the A column and B 
B underscore mean is what we're going to rename what's currently the B column. And here we have our final data set. But we also have a number of objects in our environment for each step. It might be useful to go back and look at these individual steps, but for simple steps like this, um, you don't necessarily want to create all of these new objects cluttering up your environment. So one thing we can do is give each table the same name every time. So our original data will be called data. Look at that. And then we can gather the data and overwrite the original table. Then we can separate the data, overwriting the table again. We can group the data, summarize it, spread it, and rename it. So this works as long as you're running your, um, your script from top to bottom. But if at some point, say I started here and tried to run that function again, I would get an error saying that you can't subset columns that don't exist. Column A1 doesn't exist because what the data object is right now isn't what's expected at this point. It expects all of these previous steps to have been run. This can cause a lot of errors that are difficult to solve if you start reordering steps and you've used the same data table name for each step. So a better way to solve this is to use pipes. So pipes are simply a way to take the result of a previous function and send it to the next function. By default, it sends us the first argument. Um, so we can do things like create a vector of numbers and we can pipe this to the mean function. This takes the result of the C function that creates that vector and sends it to mean. This is exactly the same as if we had just put those inside of the mean function or assign them to a variable and then calculate the mean of that variable. The pipe function can help you to think about your steps in processing data in a more logical order. So instead of thinking I'm taking the mean of these numbers you can think instead that I'm going to concatenate these numbers into a vector and then I'm going to take the mean of those numbers. So I read the pipe as and then. So let's pipe together all of these functions. So we only need to set one object, data. We're going to use the tibble function to create this table. And then we're going to send the result of that to the gather function. Now this pipe takes the place of the first variable, so we need to delete that. So, and then we gather the resulting data table um, using the key variable and the value value. We're going to gather these columns. And then separate those data. And then we're going to group those data and then we're going to summarize them. And then we're going to spread the data. And then we'll rename two of the columns. 
this format can be much shorter and also only creates one object. It runs all of these functions, each on the data table that was a result of the previous function, to give us our resulting data table. So again, you can read piped functions from top to bottom in a way that makes a lot of sense. So we're going to create a table called data. It's going to have IDs from 1 to 10, a column called A1 with 10 random numbers, A2 with 10 random numbers, B1 with 10 random numbers, and B2 with 10 random numbers. And then we're going to gather to create a column called variable and a column called value from the columns A1 through B2. And then we're going to separate the column called variable into two new columns called var and var m. We're going to separate them at the first character. And then we're going to group our data by the ID and var columns. And then we're going to summarize these data. We'll create a new column called mean, which will be the mean of the values in each group. And then we'll drop the groups. And then we'll spread these data to make new columns. The key names in the var column will be the headers, and the values in the mean column will be the values. And then we're going to rename to make new columns called a mean to replace a and b mean to replace b. And 